All right. So that section that I just read actually will also help you with question two. So I read from about paragraph seven to paragraph 11, and uh, I'm sorry, 10. And it is important to note that Again, this one is specifically asking about the capital. So it asks you, which of the following inferences about the capital, which we remember the capital is where President Snow is, it's where the government is that controls everything else in the districts. So they're asking you, which of the following inferences can be best supported by the text? So really read each of these. I can tell you right now that there's one or two that you can definitely eliminate pretty easily. A, they are planning to make this the final Hunger Games. B, they attempted to create a fairer society with the Treaty of Treason. C, they control most of the food and resources the districts need to survive. Or D, they refuse to acknowledge the dark days. Guys, if you actually go back and reread what I just read, there's definitely mentioning that especially if you look right here about the Treaty of Treason. I'm going to reread this to you. Again, hopefully this will help you a little bit to at least eliminate one or two of these answers. The result was Pan Am, a shining capital ringed by 13 districts, which brought peace and prosperity to its citizens. Then came the dark days, the uprising of the districts against the capital. Twelve were defeated, the thirteenth obliterated. The Treaty of Treason gave us new laws to guarantee peace, and as our yearly reminder that the dark days must never be repeated, it gave us the Hunger Games. Hopefully that helps you to at least eliminate two. So if you've eliminated two, think about this. Which of these really describes the capital the best? Which one really, really shows what the capital does in the districts to help you answer that one? All right, number three. What is most likely the author's intent in including the following description from chapter one? So this is actually coming directly from it. I believe it's towards the end here. Um, hmm, or maybe it's the beginning. Either way, I'm gonna read it for you first. The camera crews perched like buzzards on rooftops only add to the effect. Now, imagine you're seeing the actual reaping happen, and it's kind of like the paparazzi. When they say that they are perched like buzzards on rooftops, um, they're trying to give you an, uh, a simile of um, a very good image of you know, birds that are kind of staring down hungrily as they're trying to watch this all happen. Um, and if you've seen the movie, um, you'll know that um, they talk a lot about how they're always being watched and there's always cameras everywhere. So many camera crews watching every little move that they make. So why would the author include this? A, to show just how high up the cameras are positioned. I think that's a pretty easy one. Um, B, to show how ominous and invaded the square feels on the day of the reaping. And especially in District 12, think about, um, would there be so many people normally? To establish the feeling of excitement in the air as the reaping is about to begin. Or D, to plant the seed of what a superstar Katniss or Prim could become if they are chosen. Guys, keep in mind, um, not just that there wouldn't normally be a lot of people in that square where this is happening, but also too, it's a very poor district as well. Do you think about would camera crews normally be there to watch all of this type of that stuff? Would they really care about them except for the day of the reaping? All right, number four. Which of the following best explains Katniss's reaction in the following excerpt from chapter two? So if you go down towards the end, um, it says, and then I see her, the blood drained from her face, hands clenched in fists at her side, walking with stiff, small steps up toward the stage, passing me. And I see the back of her blouse has become untucked and hangs out over her skirt. It's this detail, the untucked blouse forming a duck tail that brings me back to myself. Think about this. It's her little sister. It's prim. And if she's walking past her, going up to the podium because she's been chosen. She's the girl. Think about it. I'm going to continue this in the next video.